So nearby, Brad and Nisha, can you see my special box? Yes. Inside this is a present I got for Lucas, who's editing this video. So I say we keep this special box here and open it at the end of the video. But first, let's talk about Peter Thundershield. Many years ago at Fact Theme, we maintained an infrequently updated series detailing various men, women, and the occasional fictional character who displayed something we call diagenesitis. Diogenes? Diogenes? I pronounce it. Diogenes, was it? Yeah, okay. So they had, they had a genetic condition known as Diogenesitis, which is characterized by enlarged balls and the inability to give the faintest whiff of a fuck. And today, we're reviving it to talk about a man called Peter Wessel perhaps better known by his awesome moniker of Peter Thunder Shield. So that's the thing, Peter Thunder Shield. What a god I know. For this, I'm going to crack open this low-calorie, low-alcohol beer, because why not? It's Thursday. You're drinking some bubble tea, right? Yeah. Which looks luminous green. It's apple and raspberry bubbles. <laughs> looks like you guys popped a corp. We've got a green pint first. It does look a bit like a cocktail. What I want is, you know, like that, you know that episode of The Simpsons where Mr. Burns is like, with the mystery box, and it's just like one of the best exploitable images of just... First thing you're probably wondering is, who was Peter Wessel, right? Yes. Well, Peter Wessel was a Norwegian aristocrat who decided he didn't want that kind of life, and instead just joined the Navy. Like, he did his Simpsons, you remember Simpsons reference, like the Vivon et Niage? He joined the Navy and just decided, I'm going to become not just the best naval officer in the history of Norway, I'm going to become a fucking legend. And his exploits were so audacious, they piqued the interest of none other than the King of Norway himself. What was he doing that made the King of Norway take a listen? Well, here's the thing, like, Brad, you're a big fan of Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Oh, yeah. So you like all of the, like, you know, the naval combat featured therein. And are you a big fan of, like, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow and Will Turner's, like, let's just say, uh, interesting and novel approach to naval combat? What do you mean swinging between ships like a... Like, maniac. Yeah, and you know, all the crazy shit they do on the waves, and you have, like, Commodore Norrington being like, what the hell is going on? This is not how we were trained to fight! That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. So it would seem. That's essentially what Peter Wessel did, because even though he was a very experienced sailor, he reportedly, like, you know, got his sea legs, like, on a, Nor a Norwegian slave ship bound for the West Indies, so by the time he joined the Navy, he was a very experienced sailor, but he had nothing in the way of formal naval training. And as a result, he hadn't learned the proper way to fight. So his approach when he commanded a ship of his own to, like, you know, attacking the enemy was to literally attack them head on. And would you like to hazard a guess at why that was a bad idea? Um, because you would just crash your ship into them. Boys, well, Brad, where are ships guns, like, historically? Where are ships what? Gun, where are ships on the guns? Side, aren't they? Yeah, they're on the yeah. side. So where are the, where are the guns not? Well, I mean, if it's David John's ship, they well, are. Well, they on the front. Yeah, they're not on the front. Yeah, but he would go. You mean like proper head, head first, so he just crash into. Oh wait, so he's attacking them, but he, head on, but their side, their broadside on him. So they can shoot him, and he can't shoot them. No, he just go straight into the front of them because <laughs> his his reasoning was of like, well. All the guns are on the side, right? And, and these men were like, well, yeah, that's how we shoot them. He's like, but then they can shoot us. And he noticed that even in engagements where, like, you know, his side won, like, they'd still come up away from it looking like, you know, one of the ships in Paris and the Caribbean's, like, blown holes everywhere. He's like, well, that's stupid. Why don't we just attack them from, like, you know, the front where they've got no guns? You'd think it would be um, tactically sound to just put the guns on the front. Well, that's because it. if every single ship has the guns on the side, then you can be like, well, if we do, head, if we do go head on, we can just shoot them and they can't shoot us. Admittedly, you know, some ships do have like one or two cannons on the front, but throughout much of the history of naval warfare, the tactic was broadside. Mm. And Wessel was like, well, that's stupid because the enemy can also shoot us, so why don't we just attack them from the front? And this is where the Pirates of the Caribbean move comes in. Why don't we attack them from the front and then do like the boating equivalent of a fucking drift? Go sideways broadside them from the front, and then by the time they've got their lumbering boat asshole in line with us, we just already fucked off. I mean, I've played a lot of Sea of Thieves in my time, and one of the big strategies is the anchor turn, yeah. where you drop your anchor, and then uh, as soon as it hits, you start turning, well, it's literally, it back yeah. up and carry on. Which is literally what they do in Pirates of the Caribbean, isn't it? Where they go in, it's like they're gaining on us. Mm. And then they throw a thing overboard, and it's like, they're still gaining on us, like drop anchor. And they do the, uh, do the big turn, and then broadside from the front.
that's what Peter Wessel would do. And what made his like um, uh, like his peers so annoyed is one that he did this because that's not the proper way to do it, and two that he would attack every ship he came across in Norway's waters, even Norwegian ships. Well, no, not Norwegian ships, but they were they, <laughs> at the time they were at war with Sweden, so he just attacked literally every single ship he saw, regardless of how big it was, and using his tried and true tactic of just go like you know attacking them head on, he almost always won. I'm just, there's a poor Swedish fisherman just no, there in his little like, time. No, any gosh. ship that came to us that was not a Norwegian, he would attack it and or commandeer it. And as a result of this, he had a near peerless, flawless naval record, which made it very difficult to like you know punish him. And saw him rising through the ranks. And by the time I think by the time he'd been in the navy for ten years, he was rear admiral. But this is like but just to put in, like no, just put in context how like good he was. This Ten years, rear admiral. This is these boxers who arrange fights with like weaker opponents to pad their record. Like sure, maybe he's like, oh, I've I fought a thousand ships and I've won nine hundred ninety nine of the fights. Like yeah, but most of your ships were rowing boats. No, like I said, he would attack any ship regardless of its size, which frequently saw him attacking much larger ships, which only saw his tactic of attacking directly head on be that much more effective because his ship was so much more maneuverable. He could do his tactic of, like, no, handbrake turning in their face, broadsiding them from the front, and then fucking off. And then by the time the ship had, like, you know, they'd give up, he'd go back and do it again. And he just kept doing that, and he always won, and everybody hated him for it. This sounds like a very offensive tactic. Oh, yeah. So why is he called Thunder Shield? Well, Thunder Shield, like, we'll get to that in a moment, we still need to talk about, like, you know, his other exploits, because, like, he was a very smart and pragmatic like um, uh, fighter on the waves and as mentioned he didn't have any formal training he also didn't really care for like you know the gentlemanly aspect of warfare because like, why would i do that why the fuck would i give a shit about like, you know um uh, like, you know the rules of warfare we're at war so other things he would do included literal false flag attacks where he'd be like oh no we're surrendering and then just everyone shoots <laughs> or commandeer their shit obviously this is a bad thing, you're not supposed to do that. But his reasoning was, we're at war and I always win. It's like all fair in love and war. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and I, you guys haven't played Mass Effect now, yeah. but Lucas, who's editing this, has, so he would appreciate that. The picture I put beneath like that sentence describing how he'd do that is just a Solarian from Mass Effect, which you don't get and he probably is like, giggling to himself about. So if you, for anyone who doesn't get that reference... In the Mass Effect universe, you've got the Solarians, who are a very short-lived amphibious race who live for about 40 years. And when you like talk to one of them, you ask them about their like history in warfare, they talk about how like every single Solarian war started with a completely unprecedented surprise attack. And when you ask them about it, it's like, why would we announce that we're gonna fight you? That's <laughs> stupid. That is true, yeah. It's stupid. Why would we tell you that we're declaring war on you instead of just declaring war and winning in five well, minutes? You want the advantage, so yeah, it's gotta be a surprise. Yes. I've, I've always wondered this about actual warfare though. When you hear the stories of like, oh, we'll meet in the middle and parlay and decide the terms of the battle, it's like, it's a war, just stab them in the middle, you're done. <laughs> well, there is like a really great um, uh, like writing prompt, like on like our writing prompts on Reddit. Where they asked the question of like, um, like humanity has like gone onto the stars. There's a war with a galactic enemy, and like everyone's confused why humans are asking about like you know the rules of war. And they say, well, it's war. Why would there be any rules? So, but and a lot of the stories are really interesting to read. Like editor, you can find like the links to that. Some of them are really fun. They talk about how like other races couldn't comprehend how brutal humans would be. So it's like you know just bombing supply ships and stuff like that. Is that like, why would you do that? They're not combatants, like, but they're fueling the war machine, and that's why the rules of warfare is like the Geneva Convention, mm. things like that, and like you know during the pandemic, one of my favourite Twitter accounts, can you violate the Geneva Convention, which is a Twitter account of video games where you can violate the Geneva Convention. <laughs> We are, we're talking about, you know, war many hundreds of years ago, and Peter Wessel was not about that life. And understandably, his audacious, brazen tactics saw him earning many enemies of his enemies, but also within his own ranks, because people just didn't like the way he did his shit. I mean, it sounds like his record speaks for itself. Though. And that's the problem, because as much as all of his peers disliked him, they couldn't argue with his results. And like when they'd say stuff like, stop attacking every ship in the water, stop attacking bigger ships than the one you're on, like, why? I always win. <laughs> and he'd come back to base and stuff like 15 extra ships in tow that he commandeered and like 1500 prisoners they're like where'd you get all these like oh I got them dinner they're in our waters it's like stop attacking fishing boats now the opening scene of Hot Fuzz where they got a Angel away because he's too good <laughs> 
your arrest record is 400% higher than any other officer, which is why it's high time that such skills were put to better use. We're making you sergeant. I see. In Sanford, Gloucestershire. In where, sorry? In Sanford, Gloucestershire. But the problem was these exploits were so audacious that the king found them funny. And at no point was this more apparent than when Wessel attacked a British ship. Ooh. What year is this? Uh, it's like 1600s, 1700s. Just wondering what era of Britain we're in. Well, just think of it as like, you know, throughout much of like, you know, naval history, like the, the quote is what Britannia ruled the waves because we had the biggest, strongest naval force in history pretty much yeah, throughout all of it. Because we couldn't do anything without making ships. Basically, yeah. Our shit little <laughs> rock with no resources. And uh, Sweden were backed by um, the English and the French, if you can believe it. There was an English or British ship, I always use them synonymously, so if I'm getting that specific bit wrong, I'm sorry, but all you need to know is a big old ship full of Englishmen like rolled into Norway's waters and Peter Wessel's like, well, I better start attacking that. Oh, no. <laughs> and then, and then, these men were like, why are you doing this? Like, no, we better attack it, it's in our waters. And... <laughs> What really got to like the captain of that ship is one, that a ship as small as Wessels was attacking it, and two, that it was kind of winning. And they and they kept trying to go away, but the ship kept following them. And it only stopped attacking them when like night fell and they couldn't see each other. And then the moment like the sun rose, it started attacking them again. And then suddenly everything fell quiet. Ooh, so what do you think happened, Brad? A thunderstorm. No. I want, I want to know where the name comes also, from. Yeah, I was thinking it'd be maybe something with lightning. Maybe a bad, bad waves or something like no, that. No, maybe Leviathan. Sea, sea creature. Jack Sparrow turned up. No, no, the sea was eerily quiet, and so was the battle. And the captain of the uh, the English ship looked down, saw a little rowing boat coming across with an en- with an en- with an envoy on it. And the envoy got onto the boat and uh, said, "I have a message from my captain." And the, the English captain's like, "What?" And he goes, "Well, he's, he's asking if you got any cannonballs." English captain, like, what do you mean? He's like, well, we've run out, and he's kind of like in this fight. Can we borrow some of yours? And the captain was so impressed by the balls it took to do that, he sent a message back off. Oh, we give up. I would like tell you, captain, we will not attack or pursue you. I would like to toast to his health. So that the two ships went alongside each other, raised a, t- a toast, and then the, British, the English ship left, and like um, uh, Wessel ship went back to Norway. He was, that's it. He was that ballsy. Can I, can, I, yeah, can I borrow some of your gear to keep yeah. fighting you? So I'm enjoying this fight. Can I borrow some cannonballs? And the captain was like, who the fuck is this man? What a legend. Let him off. <laughs> That's like, it reminded me again of Sea of Thieves. One of the things you can do when you're battling a, an enemy mm-hmm. player's ship is fire yourself in the cannon to their ship, board, steal their cannonballs and jump off the ship. Well, that's one of the things Wessel would do. It's one of the things that like, in, endeared him so much to his men is that he almost always like led the charge to like, commandeer a ship. And he was a crack shot and expert swordsman. And was like a storytelling of like the time like, uh, like he got cornered by three Swedish dragoons like on a beach. And he beat them all with his sword and leapt out into the sea and just yelled, not today. And then swam back to his ship. <laughs> or another time when they were in the middle of a thunderstorm and it cracked their mast. And the men are like, oh no, what do we do? And come on, man, we're winning. <laughs> so that's how he, he got a lot of his like, you know, respect for that. And uh, But when he went back to Norway... Like, that's when his superior's like, we can get him for this. Let's court-martial his ass. <gasps> and why do you think they court-martialed him? Because he attacked a British ship. No, no, like, no, they were the enemy. They were, like, allied oh, with... because he didn't finish them off. No, it was because he revealed sensitive information to the enemy. Namely, that he had no ammo. <laughs> oh. That's one of the king's... Sh- keep in mind, it's one of the king's ships. You reveal information about one of the king's ships to an enemy. That's a court martial offence. But the thing is, though, Wessel was like, well, why don't we let the king weigh in on this? And they were thinking, well, if the king, like, you know, if the king's annoyed, then he's definitely going to get court martial. You get double court martial, and the, the king, king fucking loved it. The, the, the king funny. thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and Wessel, being Wessel, um, after getting like, you know, the court martial quash, asked him for a promotion, which the king gave him. Oh my God. <laughs> they just gave him a promotion. So many balls on that guy. <laughs> well, I think so, so many balls, and like there were numerous other battles. <laughs> Except on his ship. Yeah, that's it. There was there were so many other battles where he did that because after he got promoted, he got a bigger ship and a fleet, and you know he went, you know, <laughs> use that fleet to attack more Swedish ships, and that eventually resulted in him being like promoted to rear admiral of the entire Norwegian navy in just ten years, and the king giving him the moniker of Thunder Shield or. In like uh, Norwegian, I hope I can pronounce this. It is um, uh, Tordenskjold. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Which Thunder Shield? And would you like to hazard a guess at why he was called 
Peter Thundershield. Because it sounds better than Wessel. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, P. Wessel. Wessel. Oh, right. So, well, when the king was like, you know, um, granting him his new title, he said, I grant you the title of Thundershield because you are the shield that protects Norway's people and the thunder that strikes down its enemies. Ooh. Which means that that guy's official title was Rear Admiral Thundershield. <laughs> what a fucking badass. The entire time I've been imagining him like, sort of like Captain America, but with <laughs> like a it's shield. It's a big old like shield. A shield, yeah. Listen, like, the thing is though, look, you look like a fucking pimp. She's just like, yeah, that's right. I'm fucking Pe- I'm Peter Thundershield. Eat my ass. He needs a beard. Thunder- Peter Thundershield yeah, sounds like a like name a with a beard. beard. Well, he didn't live long enough to get a beard because he died shortly after. Um, he was very honourably discharged from the Navy after the war ended. And you want to hazard a guess at how he died. How a man of such legendary um, testicular fortitude met his end. I- I'm going to say he choked on some food. I'm going to say he drowned because it'd be ironic. No, no, he's a very good swimmer. He died in a duel. And the duel reportedly took place after a card game, which Wessel accused him of cheating in. And he challenged the guy to a duel. And uh, Wessel heard through friends, and I'm using that in like you know, big air quotes, that, oh, the guy's not serious. He's not going to turn up. And Wessel's like, oh, okay then. So he rocked up, and then the guy's there with a sword. And Wessel only had his ceremonial um, uh, dress saber. So he wasn't very well armed. But rather than bow out and give the guy the satisfaction of claiming I beat Peter Wessel, he stood his ground and fought him with the ceremonial sword, so especially a useless weapon, and was stabbed immediately in the gut and died 10 seconds later. And thus the tale of Peter Thundershield ended. I thought you were going to say like he turned up with like an old musket with no bullets and I asked his... Uh... I asked the other guy if he had any spare bullets. No, but he refused to back down. Like his honour would not let him back down. So the guy just stabbed him in the gut and he died. Kind of like how he was fighting ships, went in head on. Yep. Like, regardless, just went in head on. Yep. And it's just, uh, it's only, he only had so much luck and it eventually ran out. And one of my favourite bits is he would have, that he would have very occasionally just crash into other ships. And when they asked him why, he's like, well, it's just a good, a good way to gauge how fast they can respond. <laughs> So, like, you know, being attacked. And once he had that information, he'd, like, you know, sail away, wait until the next day and do it again. <laughs> it's like, what a dick! Ah! Oh, I don't know why, but I'm picturing him looking like Kenneth Branagh and uh, announcing arrivals by going, ha ha! I can only imagine him, like, he's like, uh, hopefully Luke can put a clip in of this. There is, like, a guy in the she show who's just, like, a captain. And all he's like, he's like, adventure! He's like, that guy. Adventure! Adventure! Four to adventure! Adventure! Are we ready to open my present? So, guys, are you familiar with the Pokemon? The Pokemon what store? Pokemon store. Oh, I know what this is. So, Nisha, do you like? Have you seen like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you yeah. Seen the Pokemon that? I've only played a bit of the Violet game, so okay. I've seen some, but not much. You've, you've seen some, but not much. Okay. Yeah. Are you aware of the? Are you aware of the Pokemon Wigglet? Maybe, I saw are you, it. Are you, so, you, you are, okay, so what I'm going to do now, so the Pokemon store is selling a, a plush of Wigglet, which is a water variation of the Diglett Pokemon like oh, line. Oh, yeah. And it, it is 10 and a quarter inches long. So, music please. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. What? No, I, I, I'm definitely so, not So everybody, <laughs> discuss. What is that? That's Wiggler! <laughs> that, that clip from How I Met Your Mother. That's a penis! But Nisha, discuss. Oh, sorry. I, 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 I forgot. Such an idiot. I actually oh, bought no. two. What? I bought two. <laughs> I bought one for me as well. They're just running out of ideas, aren't no, they? No, no, discuss. They're just running out of ideas. What do you mean? Like, like, what's, look what, at that. What's, what is what, that? Is there something wrong with this image? You know this. Does it bend yeah. over to look <laughs> forward? Yeah. So why have they made it erect? No, look. <laughs> what's, what's your problem? I don't need to say. I don't need Folks to- Folks at home, do you see any issue with this? <laughs> Just careful, you're docking them on that table. No, no, it's alright, look. What's the problem? Let's, start, let's read, look. What Pokemon come- It's official. This is Wiggler. It's a poker plush. Did it just get worse? <laughs> I was thinking like earlier because I was looking on air quote X, Twitter, whatever it is. <laughs> um, just one of them posts that says one of these Pokemon has got to go, like one of these five Pokemon has got to go. And it was yeah. just like, 
three Pokemon that looked like animals and one that was like a chandelier. And I was like, I hate Pokemon that are just shapes or objects. What's your issue with Wiggler? And it's, an, it's based on an eel. It's very clearly an eel. It can't be anything clearly. else. I think, I think um, it would look like, what, What's the issue with this, Brad? You got, pro you got a problem with it? I think it would look Please right at home if you, if you put it on your lap like a little pet. Yeah, like imagine you had a pet Wiggler and you had it like, you pet the Wiggler. <laughs> My favourite bit is, Lucas showed me what this was, like, um, like we were drunk last time he was over. And he was laughing because he saw a TikTok of it. And before he'd even finished, like, um, uh, catching his breath, I'd order two. It's great. I think we should put it, like, think we should put it in, on display in the background. I think we should put it right there. Look. Does that work? Does that look good? Does it look good? Does it look good yeah. on camera? Mm -hmm. Yep. Looks great. Good. Oh, my hands can get around that, Brad. I think it's got a pink edge. <laughs> just pink. <laughs> Nisha just put a finger right on the end. The thing that bugs me so much about this, like, is, is the Pokemon meant to be erect or is it meant to bend over like that? Well, it's based on one of those, like, Japanese eels. Maybe we can put, like, a picture of what it's supposed to be. Do you know the ones that come out of the sand and look up? But it's based on one of those. Mm. What's the shiny variation? Is it, is it skin tone? I think it's blue. <laughs> oh, okay, I mean, that'd be, yeah, I get it. That's, that's Wiggler. The best bit is though, like the evolution's called Wug Trio and it's just three of them together. You're gonna, you're gonna give my Wigglet back. <laughs> that, that, that looks so bad on the camera! Ah, <laughs> oh, but cheers Lucas, next time you're over, um, in Sheffield, I've got a present and what we're gonna do is we both gonna take a picture holding it and like just two guys rubbing the Wigglets together. <laughs> Ah, but if you like seeing shenanigans and nonsense like this, why don't you follow the channel and on our social medias and consider joining the Patreon so we can buy 15 more of these. No. That, that, that's the point. If people join the Patreon, we can all have a wiggler. Oh, God.